Hey guys, me Drupal Chris Tomer here on this Friday. Let's talk some mountain weather and a spectacular October sunrise here at Alta Ski Area. Notice everything is still dry. I don't have any snow there, but this weekend I'm tracking a windy, cooler storm system with snow for the higher elevations of Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and also Colorado. Now, it's very warm for this time of the year right now, and so the um, the rain snow lines are way up here above the high peaks of the Wasatch. It's probably going to start at about 12, maybe even 13,000, but then that rain snow line is going to drop. It's going to drop to about 9,000 feet. So it will include the Wasatch. Of course, it will include the High Uintas. So we're going to see some precipitation in the form of snow up there uh, with this. Let me show you radar across the west, and there it is. So our area of low pressure is finally making its move. It was up there in the Pacific Northwest for at least three days, maybe four days spinning in the same places, but our low is finally moving. And so it will take this precip and the storm track will be roughly like this. So it's gonna move and brush Northern Utah, at squarely gonna run through Wyoming and in perfect position for Montana as well. And it will brush Colorado. Um, but there's going to be a lot of wind with this storm system on the southern side. So parts of Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado, it's going to be windy in addition to seeing some precipitation uh, in those areas. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Here's the, uh, the radar out of uh, Nevada and uh, California. You can kind of see the spin right here over Reno. So and there's a little bit of rain snow over the high Sierra right there. But all of this precipitation is being moved into the interior and the Intermountain, uh, Intermountain West. All right, here are my uh, bullet points for this. Here's what I'm expecting. So we've got this storm system today through the 6th. Uh, and it's going to be a windy one, 40 to 80 mile an hour wind gusts. And, and over across a lot of the high peaks there, Utah, parts of Wyoming, and a lot of Colorado. So the rain snow line, here's what I'm seeing. So I mentioned the Wasatch here. Um, starting at about a 12,000, at about the 12,000 foot level, that's going to be a rain snow line. Then it works its way down all the way to 9,000 feet over the course of time. Tetons, kind of similar, but actually it drops all the way down to 8,000 there. Montana, it drops all the way down to 7,000, as you're definitely on the cooler side of the storm system. And in Colorado, my goodness, it starts up at 14K and drops all the way down to 10K. So that's the way it looks with this. So what you read into that is it's warm to start, and then as the cold front comes through, the progressive it will progressively lower that rain snow line. Here are the best odds for snow, and you can see there's one to two, maybe three general chances here, but that's the one that's coming right now, 10-3 through 10-6 across Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana. B.C., you can see the dates here for best odds of snow over the very highest peaks of uh, British Columbia. All right, here's a uh, water vapor satellite imagery. And remember on this, you're looking at water vapor or moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. All of this orange, red, and uh, black colors here, these are that's drier air. That represents drier air in the middle of the atmosphere. All your actions right here and the whites and the blues, and there's our area of low pressure that will continue to track right through here over the next three days. So, uh, and there's also a bigger dip in the jet and area of low pressure up here. You can kind of see it. So that, those are the main players uh, in the forecast. Let me show you the uh, forecast radar and how this is going to play out over time. So we'll start this today at about lunchtime, Friday, October 3rd. And there is our precip moving into the interior and the Intermountain West. Now this is what the radar should look like in the future. The brighter colors, when you see the greens, the yellows, and the oranges, that would represent more intense precipitation in the future. All right, slide this ahead. There's dinner time today. All right, here's the early morning hours of Saturday. So this is Saturday morning. You've got a pretty hefty band of rain snow right here, a little bit working its way through Colorado over the Continental Divide. Again, the snow levels start high, but then they progressively get lower, and you've got some precip behind this uh, storm system as well. 
All right, let's move ahead. Here we are, lunchtime. Boy, look at that just flare up over Wyoming and Montana. That is some pretty heavy precip right here. Even brushing northern Utah. All right, so that's, that is uh, lunchtime on Saturday. There's dinner time on Saturday. And, and again, this is really all about the storm track, which takes it kind of right through here. So most of the precip is along that storm track and to the north with just a little bit and a lot of wind to the south. Uh, all right, here we are early. This is early on Sunday, October 5th. Notice the area of low pressure right around here. You've still got some wraparound precip through Montana and Wyoming in a teeny tiny bit there over the high Uintas. All right, let's go to, there's lunchtime on Sunday. There's dinner time on Sunday. Um, so the low pressure somewhere out here, but we're getting this cyclonic curvature around this low, and that's pushing some of the rain snow back through Wyoming, even down into the Front Range High Peaks and the Continental Divide of Colorado, no doubt that is going to be windy as well with that type of setup. All right, here we are. This is the early morning hours on Monday, and the low's mainly gone. There's just some very residual areas of rain, snow across Wyoming, and then that's it. So that's, our, that's the evolution of our windy, colder storm system with some snow across the higher elevations. Let's look at... Uh, so these are forecast atmospheric pressure anomalies in the middle of the atmosphere up at about 18,000 feet. Um, so the current day, there it is, Friday 10-3. There's our storm system, lower than normal pressures, dip in the jet stream, some lower pressures up here in uh, northern BC and northern Alberta. Big area of higher pressures right here with those uh, oranges and reds. So that's the current setup. Let's move this ahead. Right, here we are, Saturday, 10-5. Big drop in pressures here. That's where our air of low pressure is. That's our storm system. Windy, cooler, with rain, snow. All right, here we go. This is 10-9, Thursday, 10-9. couple of things to point out. A lot of higher pressures out here across the upper uh, Midwest and the Great Lakes. But there's our next storm system right here, moving into the West Coast. Big drop in pressures, and also look at this. This was on the uh, the forecast the last couple of days. Uh, it looks like some sort of a tropical system, either a tropical storm or hurricane there or something. So what might happen, it's not set in stone, but as this low moves in, it could scoop up or siphon in some of the moisture from this, and that could enhance or add to some of the moisture with that as we work our way late into, into next week into next weekend. We'll see if that happens. If the timing's right, it will probably drag some of that in. All right, here's the time height forecast. This is for Cameron Pass in northern Colorado, and this is roughly 80 to 84 hour forecast. There's our starting point down here, and you read it in this direction into the future. And I'm looking for the greens, and I do see some here. That's moisture in the atmosphere, but I also see a heck of a lot of wind. Look at the folding right here in the pressure so this is pinching the pressure and there's going to be a significant amount of wind with this and you can see these wind flags um, they're starting to show some triangles I mean that's 50 60 knots of wind maybe even higher so you're looking at 60 70 80 mile an hour winds over the front range high peaks of Colorado if this plays out and so you're looking at basically there's the start of the fourth there's the fifth and then it works its way into the six. So a very windy period, four, five, six, uh, in parts of Colorado. And yeah, there could be some snow accumulation above 10,000 feet. If I were estimating it right now, I'd say probably one to four inches of accumulation, but also a lot of wind in those front range high peaks of Colorado. Um, here is the extended snow forecast. This is Jackson, Wyoming. Um, takes us all the way out to October 18th. The ensemble mean, model mean, is about 5 inches over that duration. But look at the error bars, could be up to 10. Um, you can see there's a bit of an acceleration or upward trend right there. October 4, 5, and 6. And then a little bit more here, October 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Again, that's Jackson, Wyoming. So we're talking about snow all the way down to Jackson, Wyoming there. Now this is a 5-day snow total because I wanted it 
to show what we can expect through this storm system. So five days. And you've got, anywhere you see these purple and pinks, that's, that's six inches plus. That's a lot of Wyoming. Uh, a bit up there in Montana, especially up here in Alberta. Uh, you've got over six potentially there in the high Uintas. And maybe up to six over parts of Colorado and a bit here for the Sierra as well. Maybe up to six inches there indicated. Um, let's zoom in. All right, so this is Wyoming got parts of Utah, Colorado, and Montana showing up. And again, where you see that pink purple, that's six inches or more. And we've got that showing up over the, uh, you got it over the Wind Rivers, the Tetons, the Bighorns, Yellowstone. You've got it up here in the Absaroka Bertus. You've got it here indicated over the, uh, the High Uintas, six inches or more. And potentially, right here over the Wasatch, above 9,000 feet, you could be looking at six inches of snow accumulation and maybe up to six here over some of the zones of Colorado. Let me zoom in here. Let's go to Montana. Five-day snow forecast. You've definitely got potentially up to six, seven, eight inches there over parts of the very highest. Glacier would be included right there, and then up into Alberta as well and B.C. Um, Let's go down into, there's your uh, forecast for parts of Wyoming. We know that's going to be big there. Let's go down to Colorado and take a look around. So you're more, again, you're not on the optimal side of the storm track, so you're going to have a lot of wind, but certainly one to four inches here in some of these blues. And you might see up to six down here over parts of the, uh, the higher San Juan Mountains. And there are the high Uintas right there, maybe six inches or more. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, this morning mountain weather update on this Friday. Always appreciate you tuning in here. I'll keep things updated as the storm system rolls into the Intermountain West this weekend. Take care and have a great day.